This conference will now be recorded. Hello. Can you hear me? Can anyone respond, please? Uh, this is Dr. Aisha from Aries Exams. Uh, I'm going to talk about part two, MRCG2 preparation. So let me introduce my group to you. Uh, we have been teaching MRCG1 candidates since 2002 for part one, and uh, since 2008 for MRCG2. And uh, we take pride in teaching latest content with teach to test approach. Our past percentage is 85% and those who join us for the long courses, and their success rate is between 90 to 95 percent. And the candidates who read books, they are at a disadvantage because of the outdated information, time-consuming reading, and they are unable to make sense of the material from question point of view. It is exam team. It helps candidate to understand what is being asked in the question which most of them find quite difficult to understand. These are some of the, there are some human features of this course, which I'll be telling you about after a while. It's our observation that majority of the doctors who come to attend courses with us, they have failed on borderline, like by a couple of marks in their previous exam attempts. It is very difficult to identify weakness of such candidates who are well prepared, and they are asking like 60 to 70 percent questions correctly in MRCG2 exam, but somehow they have failed the exam by two or three marks. Our team has developed certain techniques, strategies, and tactics which help in the its course attendees to improve such areas. It is exams. It is proud to report that more than 80 percent of the students in the MRCOG UK. MRCPI Ireland and Arab Pole to pass the exam in the first attempt. Unfortunately, those who are left behind and they are unable to clear their exams, mostly they will fail due to non-academic reasons. I mean that they will have good background knowledge, but they will be facing problems due to in other areas, like most of them are working, duty rosters are very bad, they are not helping, you are not getting study leave, then some emergency calls, they can be given. Then there can be domestic circumstances. For example, if someone, you know, like the doctors, they are settling down, they have young children, very hard to care for them, and then carry on, uh, carry on your own daily activities, and then to work on the exam, because this exam is one of the most difficult exams. I have seen doctors who failed because they were caring for their young children or they were caring for their sick dependents, old parents, in-laws, so or everything takes time. Then they can be caught in difficult social situations or they will have lack of information about their exam and about the online courses. We take this opportunity to introduce you with the salient features of our MRCG courses. And uh, this information is updated every now and then, and we try to keep updated everything as per the RCG guidelines. So important sources of the exam, as you all know, that you should never be reading the books because by the time a book is published, that information is already at least one year and can be up to five years outdated. One good example could be that of information on sexual and reproductive health and contraception as you know the guidelines they keep changing all the time so green top guidelines they are the most important source then nights guidelines then college has two journals but basically you should know about the obstetrician and the gynecologist that is the top then best practice guidelines scientific impact papers rcg consent forms and some of the patient information leaflets and ASHA guidelines, FSRH guidelines, then there are BASH guidelines, and the list goes on. Then it is very important for you to know that how you should 
uh, use important resources. And uh, it is very difficult and time consuming to go through important resources in limited time. So we will help you make sense of it, including what and what should not be read. Actually, what should not be read, that is more important. Why? Because I have seen the candidates reading huge textbooks. They will read all new guidelines and they just want to keep up in their memory with the older guidelines also. So it's not humanly possible to remember lots and lots of stuff. So we will help you make sense of it, including what and what should not be read. More important that what you should leave as doctors, you people find it very hard that you should be leaving certain areas. So how we can help you, like in, we can summarize guidelines for you. We can give you timetables, then biostatistics. That is one of the challenging areas for the doctors because we are not involved actively in the French, in the research, and then sometimes, you know, we are taking references from other systems, like from French, Canadian, American system also. Then you should be able to prepare like important topics from the previous talks, but you don't have to read all the talks. We will tell you that how you should go about them. Uh, just remember that I'm just giving you a brief review that what should be prepared. Then we will go to the more specific areas that why, what is this exam about, what you should do, because you know most of you requested that I should start with giving you some background and the tips on the preparation, and then we can go to further details. As most of the doctors who come to us, they have already taken the attempt, so they are familiar with the system, familiar with the papers. Then you should be able to practice a lot with the questions. Like in the ADS view bank, you can find at least 400 EMQs and 800 plus SPS, and all of them are online. People play unusually a lot of emphasis on the recalls, but let me tell you, recalled questions are not important, but the recalled topics are important because if you will take those topics out, then you cannot set a paper. But somehow, if you have difficult questions, uh, like you didn't understand the concept or like sometimes they will not know that how to approach that question. So we just help in that area. Personally, I don't believe that you should just confine yourself with recalls. That's because the exam is way more than just reproducing things. Then uh, we use recall questions to help you understand the topic rather than memorizing single answers then mock exams are there and they can help you a lot. They can familiarize with you with the exam prep and then you can learn about other online materials. So as you know, like uh, who should, who is eligible to take these exams? So anyone who has passed MRCUG1 exam, then the candidates, they can go and they will go for the part two MRCUG. You'd be surprised that many candidates, they don't know about the updates of the college. Like, as you know, like immediately after passing your part one MRCUG, you can go for MRCUG2. Now you don't have to complete a four year training to appear in the part two exam. So once you come to us, we give full package to the students that in the first six months, we have them prepare the part one MRCUG and the day they pass their exam, we take them to the next level. And uh, there are many examples where our students, they have passed both exams in one year and now they are completing their training to take part three. So uh, when we talk about MRCUG part two exam, no doubt it is a tough exam, but it is even tougher for the non-UK based candidates like most of the candidates in the RCOG, if you will go and you will see the names, most of them, they will come from Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, UAE, Middle East, Myanmar, and even from China, uh, Hong Kong, Malaysia. And uh, you'll be surprised that we get many candidates from USA who were already working as consultants but you know, the like uh, American college guidelines are different from the RCUT guidelines. So these people usually they will fail like a couple of times and then they will come to us and we 
train them for taking MRCG2 exam. Then we get plenty of candidates from West Indies because I think that is that was a colony of UK. So still this MRCG is a highly respected qualification everywhere. Then we get candidates from Australia and New Zealand because their system also recognizes these exams. In Canada, they accept this qualification if you have been working in UK for like one year or two, and then you can get the lo locums also in Canada. So that, that's why this exam is very important. And uh, above all points, this exam shows once you have passed this exam, it means that you can practice safely throughout the world. And since it is a highly respected qualification, so you can get good opportunities. So in our experience, so here you will have the if you, other people they fail because they they have no exposure to NHS system, and they are not aware of the GMC General Medical Council regulations. And these things are important because exam is part of the green top guidelines. They just want to see that can you practice as a safe specialist in the UK system. So in, here, in our experience, the majority of the students, they lose a great deal of time finding out the best way to study for the exam. And often, you know, they cannot, they will need a lot of advice. And then another problem is that their thinking is already clouded. Why? Because they have been, they would have asked like many people, many mentors. Then, you know, this is age of social media and people, they keep jumping from, from one group to another one. So on one hand, these social media groups, they are of great help. At least you will know that what, what others are needing and how you can benefit. Then on the other hand, the greatest disadvantage is that as candidates are desperate and they will not take advice from, from just one source. And you know, they think that when they're getting information from multiple sources, they are enhancing their chances of passing the exam. Well, this is not the case. There are certain problems because uh, all of the group members, all of the people who are running these groups and the admins, um, I appreciate that they are trying to help you guys and other people, but the problem is that most of them, they have not worked in UK. They are not familiar with the routines, with the drills, and they don't know much about the general medical council. And then when the people are answering questions, I have seen the candidates, they don't ask each other that what is the evidence for a certain answer. So if you don't know the um, evidence, then you cannot rely on that because uh, at one, if you will look at different options, they will be correct. But it is written very clearly that this is exam of the UK system in the OB Gani that what you are doing and what is the evidence and how you should go about things. So MRCUG2 uh, exam and then the online courses, yes, they can help you in several ways like uh, part two written exam and other exams at this level, they are designed to test theoretical knowledge of a person. Single best answers and EMQs, they are assessment tools and they basically test the critical thinking process along with the theoretical knowledge. Therefore, the challenge with the written exam preparation is not only to cover a lengthy syllabus, but you need to develop the critical thinking alongside. And this critical thinkings, they are needed when we are performing an assessment or intervention. As a patient status changes, then you have to recognize, interpret, and integrate new information in order to plan a course of action. Because one treatment is not good for every patient having the same condition. And especially in the obstetrics, the situation changes within seconds, within minutes then there may be no single right answer sometimes in the option, and, but you have to weigh all of the variables. You will need to prioritize your goals, and then you will have to think about the next steps. What is critical thinking? I'll tell you. Like when you get a single best answer, like I will give you example, that what is the most common cause of hospital admission in the first 
trimester of pregnancy. Of course, all of you are going to say that if the patient develops bleeding, that is the most common cause of admission in the first trimester of pregnancy. Now, this is a simple straightforward question. In the second level, they will take you to a case where your patient has mild abdominal pain, she has slight spotting, and then they will ask you that what is the next step in her management. Now you have to think that how is your patient doing? What is her clinical condition? Can she benefit from management at home or she should be admitted to the hospital? So this is your critical thinking. In the first question, that was your, just your everyday knowledge or your background knowledge that patient has, uh, can come to me, she will have bleeding and I'll have to admit. But as you must have seen, if you are following nice guidelines, you're not going to admit all patients. You are going to admit certain cases. Then out of those certain patients, like there are certain criteria, again, you need to see that is this patient going to get some help with admission or is she comfortable? How I can help her? So all WH questions, who, when, where, what, why, and then more importantly, how, and who should be caring for her? So all of these questions are important and that's, how, and that's why, you know, when the students, they come to us, we help them and we assess them and we train them basically in critical thinking skills. And these skills are more important. I know that in certain parts of the world, this thinking is not given any importance, but when you go and you work in the Western systems, then critical thinking and reasoning skills, they are very important. There is a tendency among candidates to practice only the questions to prepare for this exam. While, you know, the question practice is mandatory, choosing this method of preparation is unlikely to develop critical thinking skills. Like I like to tell you one thing, you must have seen many people, they will tell you that if you are, cannot read all talks, you know, these the um, talk is the journal of the RCUG, the obstetrician and gynecologist. Uh, many students, they, can, they come from different backgrounds, but they will have some similarities. Like all of them, they will ask me that, you know, whenever you have a TOG article, they will ask that, can we go and do the CPD questions? And uh, that information, will that information be enough to answer all the questions? My answer is no, because this is not like a school exam. Mm -hmm. This is a specialization exam where you should know the whole subject and then you should try to apply that knowledge. Like I gave you the example that, that you can apply knowledge in one step in the basic level, or you can apply knowledge in the second level or even at the tertiary level. So at the next level of the clinical assessment exam, part three, the critical thinking is even more important and it will be communicated with the examiner and the patient. Hence, forming a strong foundation during the preparation of part two, it will eventually help you to smoothly pass the part three of the exam. So if you are just remembering the basic stuff and then you're going to take the exam, then you should know that you are going to need maybe, God forbid, repeat attempts or more and more effort. So developing critical thinking is a skill that can be learned and it requires continuous supervision, motivation, and uh, because you know sometimes everyone cannot think critically. They will just go and read the textbooks and they go, they will think that they are fine. So th that is not the way. We have to promote this skill. Like I said that since 2008, we are delivering comprehensive preparatory courses for the written exam. And these courses are developed in a way that the candidates, they have to cover a lengthy syllabus in a systematic, easy to remember manner. And then they have to develop their critical thinking process at the same time. So once a candidate is with us and they are working with us, we are working together towards their success. And that's why at least 85% of our students, they pass very easily and 
up to 90% they can pass. But you know, some sometimes some people they will not pass, and it will not be because of the knowledge only. Sometimes one can have stress, one couldn't travel at time. Like in the last exam, we had one student, uh, she took exam in UK, but you know, there was some delay in the trains uh, running. So she reached the exam venue late by 20 minutes. So you can understand that sitting down and then starting the paper, everything will take its toll, And that's why she failed at the margin. So sometimes, you know, unaccounted for factors, they will come into play. So let me go back and tell you a bit about the exam. That you know that this exam is very important. It is like quite challenging also. If you go to the exam, again going back to the eligibility criteria that to sit for the part two exam, anyone who has passed part one exam, they can go and they can take the exam. Then we also get the candidates who already have a medical qualification, which is recognized by GMC. And they have been working um, in the UK for like four years and now they want to change their path. So they can also be allowed to take the MRCUG exam. Then sometimes you will get other practitioners like who were working as GPs, but now they want to switch their field. So they will also go. Then sometimes you will get other candidates who, you know, who did this lab and then they were in the uh, ob discipline and now they want to, they have fulfilled their requirements and now they're going to take the exam so uh, for the non-uk residents um the things they changed long time back like maybe 15 to 20 15 to 16 years ago when the college started accepting all work that you have done even if you know you were in the gulf and you have been working in the phccs in the primary healthcare units still they will recognize your experience and um, so don't listen to anyone if if you don't know or you're not sure about your eligibility you should go to the college website fill out that assessment of training form and then you can forward that but now the things are easier like immediate you can take part one immediately after passing your M, uh, mbbs mbbs md whichever is an mc hbb so you can take a uh, part one and then once you have passed just send another request and then you can take part two and after that you can start training yourself in the for the part three and by the time you will complete four years training um, then you will be knowing a lot about ob and you will increase your chances of passing the exam similarly if you have been working in the ob before even taking part one or part two exam and uh, this experience will be recognized by the college so that is not an issue anymore regarding exam format you know that written exam it comprises of two papers each consisting of two types of questions single best answers and the emqs or extended matching questions each paper lasts for three hours and counts for the same amount of marks with a 60 minute break in between the two papers in the spas you will get a lead-in statement, which is followed by five options from which the candidate has to select the single best option. There is no penalty for wrong answers and no marks are granted if more than one options are selected. So once we're going over the questions, I would suggest that if you're not happy about one answer, then write down on your question sheet that I, I'm not happy with this answer, so I need to do it again. And if you want, and don't leave anything un, anything blank on your mark sheet. Just put a light line. Don't darken that because it is very hard to erase that. Just put a line across the answer you want to select. Then regarding EM, and then once you have done all SBS, just go back to that question and try to answer that. So, but you should leave some clues for yourself that this answer was not good, so I would like to go over it again. Similarly, for the extended matching questions, uh, you should know that these EMQs, they are based on the daily practice of the, of the doctors, and uh, RCUG has many members on the exam committee who keep writing their cases. That's why you're not going to get the textbook EMQs. There are certain important resources and uh, i will tell you about them that how you can prepare such questions but uh, don't look uh, look for the same questions which you have just seen in your 
textbooks or you have seen in the EMQ books because you are going to get a variety of scenarios here. So you will have a lead-in statement and then you will have many options. There can be 20, sometimes even 26 options will be there. Lead-in statement is there and then there will be a list of questions. The college says that there can be up to 20, uh, up to five questions, but usually there are three questions on the same scenario. SBAs, they will differ from question to question. But EMQs, usually once you have one statement, you will have three questions. So you can understand that each question is very important. And then SBAs, they account for 40% of load score. And EMQs, they account for 60% of load scores. In the past, um, people were required to pass all components, like they should get a minimum passing score in all four papers. But this is not a, a requirement anymore. Now you need an overall pass score and you are good to go. Regarding MRCOG2 syllabus, you know that MRCOG2 exam, it assesses clinical knowledge in the con context of four modules, which are defined in the curriculum. I'll tell you about them. And then this curriculum is further subdivided into more modules. Regarding exam dates, as you know that uh, previously this exam was scheduled on July 7, but due to this coronavirus, it has been it was postponed and now this exam will take place on 27th of September. The next exam is due uh, on 27th September and then after that the exam will be in Jan 2021 and don't think that there is a lot of time. You will have uh, you will have more time and uh, within a PG this time will be there. So after that, or usually after four weeks, the college will declare is its results. Regarding the pass percentage, I will tell you that the pass rate is hardly between 20 to 25 percent, not more than that, because this exam is very difficult, very challenging. So I keep telling the students that they should not blindly go and do the exam. They should sit, they should choose a time when they will have a lot of free time, like they, they will be able to take their, you know, this annual leave and they'll be able to work on that. Um, they will not pass the exam accidentally, they have to work on it. So once you subscribe to our online courses, you will have access to fully supportive learning experience and it goes beyond personal support from our course mentors and also you will have your peers which are going to support you. And uh, then, you know, once a person starts our courses, it is not like many other courses where once you are enrolled, then you are on their own. No, we are having live classes and you are having your interaction with me, with other course members. And we meet regularly on weekly basis through video conference. And uh, this is the first step. And that's how you know we develop our relationship with the candidates and we give them individualized advices. Then the sport continues and all through the period of you know this subscription with us. And uh, the students they will get individualized study advice each and every level of the exam preparation then we are seeing that how much time we can always track from our website that how much time a student has spent on the course and how many more hours they need to put in here. Like I'll just show you a simple tutorial like here I can show you that this one is, that you can access it freely on the AES website. So it was just an introduction. You can see here that we put this just, I think a few hours away about 19 students they came here and they have left 13 messages which we have replied to and here here is the video i'll just play it for you so you can have an idea that it's very easy to use this course uh, this is um, how does it work the students they come to us we take live classes live interaction and after that on the same day we upload all of these videos pdf and the questions on the web page 
so once a week usually the students are coming coming and they are spending like four hours with us we are discussing different topics they are getting live lectures and then we are telling them that uh, what are the important points in a certain topic and then this material is uploaded and then they can go and listen to that so i'll just run this video for you for uh, th the topic is stroke in pregnancy and uh, it was published in the january talk so i'll just play it for you it's pretty simple so its duration is like 28 minutes So you can see that it's very easy. You can go there if you want to listen to the video lecture and you can access it from any device from anywhere. Like if you're even if you are working, you just you can just go there and during your work you can listen to the audio, you can watch the video on any device from anywhere. Then sometimes if you want to read the text yourself, then you will go here and you will read the same topic here, the important points they have been highlighted. And then it has been summarized for you, and that is from where you can go, and you will go to the next pages. You can see from the from here at the base, and then you can go on and you can read the full topic. So once you have seen that content, you have read it. We are just giving you the essential information. Uh, this is not a full topic, and you can understand that if you want to do the previous three years reforms, it is going to take a lot of time. Then after finishing the topic, you will go to the base of the page and like this is the stroke in pregnancy. I have seen some people, they will just keep doing the two false questions which are in the CPD section of the talk. But as you know that that is not the way that some questions are framed. So you will have SPAs. So these SPAs, we have a team of consultants who have been working in UK and Ireland and uh, even in Gulf. So they will make these questions for us. So like this, this was a um, sample tutorial. So you can see here that once you will do this question, like let's say I, uh, any question is correct here, let's see that this is my answer. So here is one point like that. Okay. Then you will go to the next question. It also carries one point. So like, let's say that. I'm just doing it without reading the question just to show you that how it works. Then is the third question. So let's see that. We have just okay. Let's select this postnatal period, then go to the next question. Just blindly, I'm just putting a dot anywhere because I'm just telling you that how it works. Now you will go and you will submit it. So here I didn't put my email, so they were expecting that I will put the email only, then you will get your reply. That is this, that is how it will work. So this is just a brief tutorial you have given and then you will find the information about the courses also. So like this, we have like many courses here. You can go, this uh, website is user friendly. You can find many things here. And uh, like you can see here that there are many courses. So which one we are looking for? We are looking for MRCUG. If you if you have any question on the way, just please ask me. Okay, I don't mind asking your questions. That's why you know this is basically to help you guys and to introduce people with the courses that on the web page. So let's go for part two course. This preview will take time. Uh, if I will go to the page, you'll be able to see that every. I have to make 
if they have, since I'm the instructor, so I'm getting this view, but once you will go, you will get another view. And any video, anything you need to read, you will just go there and click on that and you can read. So this is, I'm telling you that this is addition in addition to the points that you have before. So if you will go to the pages, you will find lots and lots and lots of stuff like there are maybe like more than 20 pages and we have tried to cover all important topics all green top guidelines and everything is there so let's see that it will come but in the meanwhile i can tell you about other things okay so this is password protective protected so i will just go so in the meanwhile if you have any question please ask me any one of you who like if you have previous experience of taking these exams, you can ask question on that. So that's how if this will work. So there aren't many tutorials which you can go and they are covering all 14 modules and they are accessible to students anytime, anywhere, and they can attend from their home or if in case you have missed any class with me or with your own instructor, then you can go back and you can ask them. And then we also give you why like regarding the study advice, you should first of all, you should be able to understand the exam and then how you should study the tutorials like the way I just told you, then tips on retaining this information, then solving the questions like I told you that we develop those critical thinking skills to answer SPS and EMQs. And basically, if you will go over the slippers, the RCOG has like 18 modules and which are further redistributed in the 12 modules and all of them are important. So if we, I tell you about the course packages, we have different packages, like we have a complete QA, then we have six month courses, three month courses, then even short courses for two, three weeks, four weeks, depends that how much study do you need. Then just three day courses also. In six month course, we tell you about, we teach you about everything and then you don't have to go and read from any other resource. Like you will get all summaries, all questions, and all talks and all of this material and you can read as many times as you like. And then after reading the questions, reading the text, you can answer the questions and you can assess and then your mentor because you know we study in small groups like usually there are five students in our group because we have a good team because we have been in the field for quite some time so that is not a constraint so we just track your progress personally so this six months course uh, you will get the question bank free with it and you are fully prepared for the exam and then since this exam is not planned in jan so you can start this course on 15 June and we will continue till 15 Jan. So you can imagine that how much time we are going to, going to spend and the success rate for this course is like 90 to 95%. Then we have three month course and uh, this is for the students who are already with us and we have extended their course because you know the exam was postponed from July to September, but still they are with us and we have not taken any extra fees, nothing and they are doing quizzes and we are accepting new students also and this course is going to start from mid of june also then this four week course this is like a trash course which you will get all summaries and some tests but they will not get access to this q bank while this question bank is very important and then in this three day courses here we just uh, train those students who don't want to take the full course but uh, they are having problems in answering the questions so they will just come to us and we will teach them that how they can answer a question and what are their shortcomings and how they can master the skill in short time like that then regarding the course mentors that they are good they are friendly they are qualified people all of us they have worked in the uk and ireland and they are available for like 24 7 and you will leave your message and we will try to answer them then you know whenever you go to any module uh, in this module the sample i didn't show you the pre-test so what we do is but usually we have a pre-test anyone who is coming for us to attend this course they have a we have a series of question bank 
series of mock exams i will just show you in a while so then they have to do the baseline test and you will get like 100 questions and they will answer those questions and then we will see that how we can help them so by doing like this we will have their information on the baseline level baseline information and after that we will see that in which areas they need more help so actually we will get that what type of candidate we have and how we are going to help them. So we don't want you to have this passive learning like a robot. You should just listen to the facts and do the questions, cram them and you are good to go. No, that is not the way forward. We will stimulate this brainstorming and then after reading the text, you will go for the self-assessment quizzes. And then it will help the learners develop a pattern of critical thinking. Like what do you already know? How do you know? That? Then what are you trying to prove and what are you trying to disprove? And then have you demonstrated any critical skills? Then what are you overlooking? That if you are not answering the questions correctly, then we will see that why you are not answering that. What is the gap in your knowledge? So after the end of each module, each tutorial, you will do a set of SPS and EMQs. And then you will get the complete answers and explanations so that you will know that why your answer is correct or why it is wrong. So there is no limit on that how many times you can take these questions. You can take them as many times as you like and you can test yourself. And as I mentioned before, that question bank is totally free. You want to take this course. And then at the same time, we see that how you are progressing and what is your learning history. So we can track and you can also track that how much progress you have made because you are always getting to see this progress bar. Progress, how is your performance, repeat quizzes and scores, they are compared to other participants also because your exam is not made, a result is not made in isolation. You know? They will take the highest scores and the lowest scores and then they will grade you. So sometimes I pass marks are set at 61, but usually they are set at 65. So you need, but it doesn't mean that you have answered 65% questions correctly. It means that you are at the 65th percentile. Then you can check results of the quizzes, SPAs, EMQs, and get the highest quiz performance among all attempted quizzes. And then you can take study notes also. Then what is the, what are the reading resources? And like I've told you that our students, they don't have to take up, pick up any other book. We just provide them everything. And we cover RCOG Green Talk guidelines, NICE, the, uh, this talk, then OGRM guidelines, uh, guidelines also. And if there is some interesting article in the BJOG or some other leading, uh, you know, these colleges leading journals then we try to be, bring up like three four lines from there also i will give you one example like in october 2018 a form study was published which showed that the rate of stillbirth is rising so we just picked up those examples to produce that information please mute your uh, mobile phone and the candidates they are encouraged to make their own notes and use for revision purpose and if they need any help during their process we are always there to help them and notes making this is actually a process through which the critical thinking is developed and candidates are guided guided by the mentor through this process so mentoring support and assistance is available to the candidates in the process of exam preparation so durations i have told you you can choose yourself that depending upon your background that how many times you have taken the exam and uh, how you are going and usually if a doctor has taken like two attempts and she, he or she unfortunately couldn't pass then we tell them that don't do anything for six months uh, just relax in the first four weeks then contact us and then we will sit with them we give individualized counseling and we tell them that how they can improve their chances. And then we strongly discourage them to re-attempt exam, exam in next six months. Why? Because you know, it's very hard to relearn, forget the things they have done before and then start afresh. But it's healthy that they should stop for a while. They should not stress out themselves. They should sit back, have a look at their situation 
and be realistic that how much time they can devote for study and um, how, my, how much time do they need. So they and us, we work together and then the results are usually good. So our courses, they are equally good for the fresh and the repeat candidates. Our CUG's recommended syllabus is followed and then we have included many illustrations, tables, figures, and then videos to explain the concepts. So if I will tell you about the premium features of our ARIES courses, I will tell you that these are, we have live sessions and all topics they are discussed here, statistics and other things which the students are feeling very frequent. A lot of emphasis is put on them. We have our supporting Facebook groups, Telegram groups, and then we have WhatsApp group and we are regularly doing activities. Tutor duration is different with each case. We, we have different uh, sessions. Initially, we will have like weekly sessions of four hours and then gradually we increase them. Like we will have two sessions, three months before the exam and then one month before the exam, we are having like daily classes and like a week before exam, we are spending like eight to 10 hours together because that is the time to give them the maximum school. And then they get regular homework. We offer them monthly mock exams. So 90 to 90% success rate for those who are just coming to us. Then online lectures, we use GoToMeeting app, and then you are also going to the page where you will get the lectures, videos, quizzes, everything is available on the web page. You can get the lecture note PDFs, which are made on different web, for, web page courses. Then you will have like online pretest, quiz, mock exams, everything is available. QBank is also available. So in each module, you are going to get at the least, you are going to get lecture, lecture notes, pretest, which can be in the form of quiz, mock exam, and then QBank. And then usually, you know, uh, this material is not downloadable. Nobody can uh, download that, but you can access that as when you like to do that. Now the question is that, like you must have seen that there are many people who are delivering courses. They are doing a good service, but why this ARIES exam is different? First of all, you know, all of us, like I have five other doctors and I'm just one of the teachers and uh, we teach to test. We don't waste time at all through unnecessary teaching. You will get very crisp, very clear notes and very clear questions because some of us, they have been working on the exam committee, but, uh, and all of us, we have attended the courses where they train us that how to develop questions and we are trained examiners also. No extra reading is required. We don't ask you to read different books, materials or notes. We use our own notes to teach and we charge most of it to the point that it, they don't, you don't require any additional readings. And then, as I told you, we use pictures, diagrams to explain different concepts where possible as per the new exam form. Then we give you individualized plan to help the students. And then there may be additional classes to revise where possible with other courses at no extra cost. In past, our students, they were allowed to attend a couple of extra sessions to meet individual needs. Then we explain the questions with different angles, different perspectives, different scenarios at level one, two, and three. And not best option on exam day, which you have memorized. So you need a long time to go over them. We are present on social media in different ways. You can get all the links, everything is available on media. Here is the email, like uh, you can get, you can contact us here. Then here is the WhatsApp group number where you can find someone to help you. And then everything we have done is that we have just divided the time in different groups like how much we guide our students that they should learn their basics. Then we have made a schedule in different forms of preparation, in different phases of preparation. We guide them to the point that what they should do four months before the exam, what they will do in the four weeks prior to exam, 
then what they are supposed to do on the last week before the exam and the last minute revision. Simple lecture I've just shown you, but I would like to show you certain other things also. And then like you are getting continuous, continuous advice on utilizing your time effectively. What you should do, what you should not do. And then we, whenever we are explaining the questions, we are not telling you that, you know, this is the green top guideline, so just do it. We just adopt this logical approach to explain key aspects of the curriculum. Like even if you are taking this MRCD course, but your mentor will tell you about the basic sciences, clinical knowledge and applied knowledge. And then you should understand the knowledge required for the exam. For example, if we have to explain venous thromboembolism, I will not just go to the scoring system because I will ensure that my student knows that what is what are the basic principles of hemostasis, which coagulation systems are involved, how they can be affected, how they will play a role in development of disease. So I will start from the, some basic information like steps of blood clotting, drugs affecting coagulation system, and its application in ob patients. So when we go like this, we build your clinical concept instead of just memorizing so that you can answer questions in applied forms also. Like here is one example. You should know that in the coagulation cascade, we have got different systems, how they are interacting, which factors are activated, and uh, you know which is the intrinsic system, which, which is the extrinsic system. Then at the same time, you should do a normal system, then you should also know that how the system can be manipulated, what anticoagulants can be used, what is their mode of action, and then in the background, what will be the other effects. So we are telling you about the normal physiology, pathology. After going through the basic concepts, you will go and you will see that how a thrombus is formed. So all information is here. With the help of pictures, this is just one of the pictures, but you will get many pictures, many charts, many others. You know, there's um, you you will get the graphs, many things you will see. So here, within when you are going over just two pages, you are familiarizing yourself with how the hemostasis in the body works, in which diseases the system can be affected. So just look at the pictures, look at some brief description, and then you. A mentor will be explaining everything in detail. So in the exam, you should have no deficiency. No deficiency. You should know that this aspirin, this is going to inhibit COX. That's why it is going to decrease the level of prostaglandins. So less prostaglandins. So the platelets they will not be able to function perfectly. So you can see here that everything has been explained. So then, like I told you, that we are developing questions in three weeks. Level one question will be, what is the mechanism of action of low molecular weight heparin? You know, the common name is flexin. So anybody can answer that after reviewing because you know that this is a blood thinner. But what actually it does in the body? So if you have gone over these two pages in a good way, then you should be able to explain it. Mm -hmm. Then what is the benefit of prescribing low molecular weight heparin patients with high risk from thrombophilia? So you should know that. Then the next question will be, how will you bridge the thromboprophylaxis? So if we now, if we look at the basic signs, we know that low molecular weight heparin has anti-10A activity. So once you have read about the coagulation system, you already know that where can be the defect. Then clinical knowledge, that how you should choose between low molecular weight heparin and unfractionated heparin. Because anyhow, if you will go to the baseline, they both are going to cause thinning of the blood. But how? So they both have different mechanism of actions. They have different half lives. So in which, if you understand the rationale for prescribing these drugs, you will know that in which patient you will have to give flexin, and under what circumstances you will have to give unfractionated heparin. So unless you know the basic activity, you cannot decide among these things, and you should have the basic information and then the applied knowledge. Like in the applied knowledge, there can be several things, like for how long you should be giving these two drugs together without causing 
excessive, excessively prolonged PT, APTC. Then in the applied knowledge, the concept will be that how to use combination of drugs to optimally benefit your patients, okay, like that. So if you have a good concept, you can easily answer SPAs and EMQs in part two exam by applying your technical knowledge. And like I have told you that this knowledge will be carried forward to the part three also. So once you have the basic concepts, then I will take you to the more specific areas. Like here we are, this is the risk assessment table, risk factors for VTE. So then I will explain to you that which one are the highest risk factors. How? Because they have different ORs. So how you can assess the profile for your patient. This one, like you can see that ovarian hyperstimulation system uh, syndrome only in the first trimester, it carries a score of four. So you need to give VTE profile access to your patient in the first trimester, but you don't have to give it to someone in the, who developed this OHSS. You will not give in the third or, or the second trimester. So now like uh, before the exam, you can get a lot of benefit. Like if I will tell you about the premium features, then again, highly interactive life interaction with the instructor, then interaction with the other students, and then interactive scenario-based activities, access to mock exams, then student-centered study approach, then exam-oriented techniques, and the case-based learning and like this. And then in the meantime, we will give you more um, information like the aims of objectives of the interactive lessons and the workshops are that how you would prepare for the MRCG part two, then what are the useful reading resources, then how to read the guideline. Like if you have to read a guideline, you don't have to read each and everything because if you look at different uh, guidelines, uh, as you know, that RCG guidelines, there are like 70 guidelines, right? So 70 guidelines or more, you cannot read each and everything. There is a specific way of reading the guideline. And like um, we explained to our students that how they can maximize their chances, what they can do. Like this is the management of the topic pregnancy. So if I will open up this topic, then you can see that many things are there, but you don't have to do each and everything. Like your mentor, they will do it for you. Okay? They will make it very short. You will get just the important information and you're going to be fine. That is the point, okay? So you don't have to do each and everything, just the main points. Then how to read the guideline, I've told you how to read the talk article. Some people will tell you that just go over the tables and do that. So things are not that simple. You need to read the tables. Yes, I agree, but you need to have the background. Why this article has been published? Why there was a need that this article should be published? Then how to retrieve, how to harvest all important information? Then how to develop the critical thinking process? How to solve SPAs? How to solve EMQs? Like uh, for EMQs, there are many, many misconceptions and that is the most difficult area, but we have developed very simple techniques where we will help you in passing your exam, yeah, answering your questions correctly. And I have students who score in MQ, EMQs, it has been like 84, like 90%. So you can imagine that we have just simplified this process. Then how you, you should know a lot about the healthcare system in the UK, who should be screened, why they should be screened, at what stages you will send them, then how you will make your own personalized notes, how you will have your own personalized plan, and then how you will do the revisions. So this is especially important for the people who are like in the early stage of their career. Then in the courses, we have included medical statistics. These are very important. And uh, the point is that many people, they know nothing about it. And you are going to get many, many, many questions in the exam which will be on the statistics. So we have simplified things. We have just two modules, two tutorials on statistics, but usually our students, they will be able to answer all questions like that. Then our QBank is very good and it is especially helpful in the final stages of your revision. And it has been written very critically. It is not just like any book. And every time the RCOG, it picks up 
publish is a new group guideline. We just go and we develop our own questions. Then regarding courses, I have told you that there are three day revision courses like which are charging like 250 only, but here also you will get all the help. Like we teach to pass the test, this approach is adopted. Again, interactive sessions, these are the best courses for the non-UK candidates. And here we don't give them the guidelines or stuff. We just teach them that how they will approach a problem and uh, how they should answer the SVs and the EMQs and they have some credit tables also and then they will get the score. This is also just a three-day course where we are going to cover all topics and the, of course we are not going to explain everything in detail but we will tell them that what they should expect to see in the exam and how they can answer those questions. So these are the important things okay? because if they don't have this information they cannot do it nicely. Then you know there are as you know that there are basically 12 modules which we need to do and um, many courses can be there, many actions can be there. And then as you know that our COG has changed the schedule also. And they have changed their syllabus in July 2019 and many students they don't have clear concept that what sort of questions, what sort of stuff they are going to ask. So I'm just take you briefly through the modules. You can see here that we have just taken up everything from the RCOG syllabus and we have just pinpointed everything to the last topic. Here you can see that this is the list of topics that our students, that our core students, they are going to see. And this is not just like, uh, you know, loosely that just start from one end and go to another one because there is a reason for including all of these things. In maternal medicine, what you need to do, we have just made the list of everything and you're going to get very brief notes here that what you should do and that information is going to be enough. Then in management of labor, what additional points you need to do, then management of delivery and other stuff, you can see that everything has been covered general gynecology many students they will have no idea about it then subcontinuity contraception and from in contraception many things are important like you can see here that there are special age groups where they will need a certain type of contraception because everything is not for everyone so how do you select and you know that these questions are asked very frequently so very important for you to know about So you can see here early pregnancy complications like we have taken up everything and then this first module is that of the oncology what to expect what sort of questions we are going to get how many questions from each module we have worked it out to that that level also. then in the urogynecology what you should be doing how much you need to do what you can leave what you cannot leave so all of these things are very important to you. So if you have any questions, you can ask me. Or if you are welcome to ask, that's why you are here. You know, if you have any questions, like you have taken the exam before, you can always ask. Uh, you can always ask me. So any questions so far? Any problem, please. So let's go to this one. I just wanted to show you. You can see here that we have got many pages here. So let's see how it works for us. So these pages they load actually very fast, and. Um, you have the options like if you want to read like this one is on domestic violence you will just go there and you will read it okay. so then you'll get the same text pdf you will get the questions everything will be there like if i will take you to the end of the page there are usually like 40 50 topics on the same page i'm just you know just giving you an overview like this is for the antenatal care module you will get it then on the gyne module you can get something like that 
there are like many, many pages, okay? So on each page on average, there are like 30, 40 topics are there, depends like on the length. So these are loading, so you can see clearly that which topic is there and then you can go and then you can answer the question okay? like that. So that's how they will fight. So many, many, many pages are there. And then again, on the web page, I will take you, like you can find two banks also. And the two banks, they're also like in detail. And you can see that how you will answer the questions and then you will get instant feedback. Like you can see that many cases, many courses are there. This is the teacher's viewpoint. You will get a different viewpoint like that. Many courses are there, many Q banks are there. Depends like in which board you are working. And all of them like, we don't have just one course for everyone. We have like different courses, different people. Then like I told you that you will be getting your own individualized. Like we have short courses, we have long courses, we have two banks like this one is for part one guys. Let me show you something for the part two guys. So it will give you some idea that how you can maximize your chances like that. In the meanwhile, if you have any question, please ask me. We have different courses like for MRCPI, for Arab board, and then Like here, if you're coming, you will get like, these are Obigaini EMQs. So if I would like to preview the page. Then I'll have to go there. So I mean, anyone who will come to us, they will get the whole full information and then they will be able to go there and they can read them. So even your instructors, they will have to enter their part passwords just to get an access to this, this page or any other page for that matter. Like here, you're going to get, again, like the previous one, you're going to get many sets. You will have to enter your email or the access number that you will get. And then you can ask the questions and then you can go directly and you can see, you can directly go to the different quizzes. Like you can say, say there are like more than 20 sets. So you will get the results, you will get your information, you will get your response, everything will be there. Similarly, you have everything for the single best answers and all of these things. So I will leave this page for you. Uh, any question, any issues so far? Okay, so that's all I wanted to tell you. Like, uh, if I will summarize everything, I will tell you that you don't have to read each and everything. You have to be very selective when it comes to exam preparation. This exam is very tough, but it is doable. Like thousands of the doctors, they have passed this exam before you, and thousands of them are going to pass yeah. even after you. So keep your knowledge updated. You don't have to go and read the um, hardest, things just read the just read the right stuff and take the most updated courses and things and then practice and of course you have to work hard because without that you cannot do anything so i've told you about the important sources for your preparation so you can focus on them and if you need to know about the courses 
Um, I told you that we have bought six months courses, three month courses, and um, four weeks, and then three days. So depending upon your choice, you can always ask us that what are you going to get and uh, what are the packages and which one is good for you. I mean, like I said before, that everything is not good for everyone. Uh, you need very specific preparations. And um, if you want to see some sample of the work, then I have just shown you uh, the free tutorials and the sample models. You can go there and you can read that. And if you have any questions, any problems, you can ask me right now, or you can just go to the web page and uh, you can go to the email and or you can go to the WhatsApp group and then you can ask me. 